we will continue with this discussion and this time around want us to focus on germ plasm evaluation as an example since we talked very much about the characterization just after we have obtained the germ plasm. I would like to begin with the crop specific trait descriptors. You already have in the notes I said to you. The best way to understand this table is to start with column C. In column C, which is described by column B, lists a number of traits, the characteristics of the traits regard property to mean characteristics as well. These are the ones you are observing, you as an observer, on the ground in a breeding nursery. So you may notice the description, the characteristics under C are the ones that fit very well in the yeast bean priorities. They are the ones that are observed in the field except for what is in row 45, which is the cooking time. That's not involved. But you may notice a very important inclusion in the description that we have check lines. So if we move to column D, it shows the MR, CW measurement methods. The M measurement method, the R measurement method, the C measurement method, the W measurement method at various scales. You can consider the word scale being synonymous with the reporting units. The reporting units can be considered to mean the same thing as scale. For example, we have zero to four. And this zero to four scale is to the R are the rating score. Then as you also look at the description of the various properties or characteristics, you see that we have certain reporting units or scales that have to do with various classes of something that is being evaluated here. Then we have the variates in column A. They are just computer codes to make the characters short. I want to say to you may be interested in recording aphid resistance.
But you see, the aphid resistance is on the leaves of the plant. And when these leaves are destroyed by aphids, they may interfere with the photosynthetic capability of the plant to build up the photosynthesis that is directed to either leaf yield or to seed yield. And because aphids occur at certain growth stages, the growth habits, again, will be very important to note because, as we said before, they can be noted through the chronological or the botanical ways. So these crop-specific trade descriptors are just a range of the examples of what we may look at than just going for one trade, for example, aphid resistance alone. Because aphid resistance may not be existing and indeed does not exist in isolation in a vacuum. So here during the evaluation, you can see that the breeder is going for more than one trade that is hitting several trades with one stone, looking at particularly the traits of agronomic relevance. We can go further now to actually format what we now know alongside the various traits that you can see in the upper row. And of course, remember the issue, the importance of using a check. And we're looking at accessions, for example, accession 10, if that's what we named one as, or accession 130, if we named it as such, and so on and so forth. And of course, ARCBD should come to you as an augmented randomized complete block design that we have already talked about. Then you can take your data that are inserted into the columns according to the used scale for further analysis. I'd like you to look at this slide. The bullet three shown by that arrow says it is good practice to keep observations and measurements as simple as possible. Because here the objective of the measurements is to determine how the trade of a specific accession compares with the diversity of the collection. Remember, you have several lines here. And remember, as I have said before, consider the various accessions being the independent factors which then when you are looking at the measurements, they will be determining how a trade of a specific accession varies among the collections that you have, that you are evaluating. Because the objective is to identify those that are most interesting to work with a little further. Because the little further I'm talking about is to eventually select parents with which to cross good with good 
in the subsequent breeding, subsequent phases. I'd like also to bring out two crucial points in what we are seeing here. It's very important that a well-known standard, for example, could be the current Okashana palm millet variety, which, if it is what the breeder is currently evaluating, it can be compared against the new accessions derived from trade evaluation. So, the last two bullets here, where a term is open to interpretation, it is best to try to make a direct comparison with a well-known standard. The other crucial point is that it's essential to evaluate the trait in a number of randomly selected plants to ensure that the full range of variation present is described. Now, there may be a need for measurements of complexity. But of course, in the event of this, you seek help. Instrumentation is good, but that interpretation needs expert advice to have meaning. This is where some of the data, when they are obtained either from several lines, several accessions of a germplasm, you can use principal component analysis. You can use other means and the software are available to cluster data. You can even use digital instrumentation to image the seed sizes, the seed shapes, the seed length, and so on and so forth. And I'll be sending an assignment of a paper to that respect. Now, after you've collected the data, you have to think about how to report it statistically. You have to think about the needed parametrics for reporting to inform on the accessions of promise. And this may involve mean, variance, standard deviation. And remember that the standard deviation gives a range. It can be like 150 kilograms plus or minus 70 kilograms. The other statistic of importance can be the coefficient of variation. Others include covariance and correlations, and they are very useful for interpretation of the data obtained in the field. Now, this paper I have indicated that I'm going to send to you as an assignment titled The Characterization of Morphological Variation for Seed Trace Among 537 Accessions of Common Vich, vich or Vicia Sativa is a bean. And it gives an example of how complex data can be measured using digital image 
análisis. Now, this slide is not very much informative, except it demonstrates a normally distributed population. Does it remind you of a continuous variation in a normally distribution or in a normality distribution, a normally distributed population? And the answer is yes. If you look on the right tail, although these guys look shorter, you may see that their values, consider height, they're higher. When you look on the left tail, the heights of these people are shorter. So, that kind of variance can be interpreted in terms of genes behind that kind of distribution. Indeed, in this particular slide, the distribution is more instructive than the previous one. I want you to remember this, that the idea of genes here, substituting for a height variation, can be likened to instructions by the left tail. These genes are instructing the height or the short height on the left to shorten up. And the genes, and of course, the shortening up just requires few genes to do that. But when you come to the right side of the tail, you may notice that the genes contributing to tallness are instructing the tall height to be taller, and therefore they require many more genes to do that. As you can see, the linear part of it demonstrates a linear increment of the height of the people that is log transformed to a normal distribution. When you have a population in a large population, then of course the assumptions of normality mean that the Distribution is symmetric with a left tail and a right tail. So that the whole part of the distribution is close to 100%. Then when you have certain deviations spread, spread out, like one is moved closer to the center, we get to 95, then more to the center, we get to 68.
the vertical line that we see with the sigma, I mean with the mu here means that it displays a central tendency. And the sigmas that go to the left and go to the right depict what is known as dispersion or spread. So, what is variance? What is variance? We see here that variance is the average distance of data values from the mean of a trade. And since variance is often a squared unit, we take the square root to keep the units same. So really, this is what we call a standard deviation. As opposed to variance, covariance is a measure of how much two different trades change together. For example, if you are looking at sorghum, there are many of these varieties being tested at Mainham. You may find that the height of the semi dwarf varieties are related to the compactness, the density of the head. Now, if you compare the issue of covariance to variance, you see that variance will just be a range over which one trade measurement varies. For example, 0.5 meters, 1 meter, 1.5, 2 meters, and so on and so forth. Just a range. That's how you should be able to separate the variance and the covariance. And this is very important to think about covariance, for example, when you are looking at the social patterns. They say birds of the same feather flock together. And as I've mentioned before in class, if you walk with seven broke guys, you'll be the eighth one. You can measure that in terms of a covariance. So I took this picture from Mainheim. And you can see we have very short, very, very short soga. Call them semi dwarf. We don't call them dwarf varieties, semi dwarf. And on the right, you can see that short one has a very compact head. Now, I like to pose this question, and I'll be posing it in the assignments that we'll be doing. Why is the covariance on the right 
a desirable positive attribute or a trait to the breeder. This next slide is very obvious. The big bullet here is showing that if we have two traits varying together and they are varying together above the expected value, then the covariance between the two variables will be positive. But if one is above, the expected value, and the other is below the expected value, then they are negatively covariant. For example, you may apply fertilizer on some plants which may go to trigger the amount of growth of the plant or the height to very high and to more leaves with very little photosynthesis left to go into the seed. So you may find that seed yield is below the expected value while the leaf the vegetative part is below, is above. And so here, then, these two traits will be negative. So really, it is more or less like, in that case, giving the vegetative growth more photosynthesis and taking even the little there is from the seed and adding it to the vegetative. That is covariance. 